I believe we have the power to affect change by envisioning the reality, the outcome we want to see as reality. So let me tell you about a village, past, present, and future. Imagine our twin cities, Lewiston and Auburn, bustling, vibrant, full of people and culture. You can hear the powerful roar of the Androscoggin River, the whistle of the train headed for Montreal, and the buzz of city life. Like the elm trees alongside the canals, marvelous brick textile mills stand tall on beautiful avenues like Canal, Lincoln, and Oxford Streets, perfectly positioned to channel the Androscoggin's waters through them and capture power to provide clean energy. This vision was the reality of Lewiston Auburn two or three generations ago. It was a place of unbelievable vision, innovation, and opportunity. It was this opportunity that attracted thousands, like my relatives, who moved here from Canada. My grandfather, Damien Letourneau, later in his career worked as a punch card cutter in the design room of Bates Manufacturing, a sought-after position of one of the most prominent businesses in the Northeast a company which employed about 5,000 people. The cards were an early form of computer programming. The Jacquard Loom was the first machine to use punched cards to control a sequence of operations. This was a critical step in the development of computers, and Bates Mill No. 5 was built specifically to house these looms and ideally designed for this process. This building is symbolic of LA's innovative and historic past and potential future. However, the 50s and 60s began a decline for Bates Manufacturing's business, and eventually the, the powerful company halted operations altogether in the 90s. In the 80s, I can remember a depressing landscape where literally almost nothing happened here. Most activity had moved to places like the mall. After high school, like so many of my friends, I couldn't wait to leave here. Yet I never would have imagined that my training as an architect at school in New Orleans would bring me back to LA and in love with the same buildings my family worked in. I began to realize that many industrial buildings in this city were designed and built in a way that could never be replicated again if we lost them. Since we, it would be cost prohibitive to build now using such quality materials and craftsmanship. We've lost way too many. We can't afford to miss this opportunity. The most prominent building of Bates Manufacturing is the building that my grandparents worked in. Bates Great Weave Shed, better known as Bates Mill 5, is a massive building occupying four acres, strategically sited at the head of the canals. It was designed expertly by a group of world-renowned architects and engineers from Detroit using the unusual sawtooth roof design, which provided the best natural lighting and ventilation throughout for the work that went on inside. The team pioneered what is now standard practice, adding steel to concrete, also known as reinforced concrete. The building is engineered to withstand tremendous weight of hundreds of looms all operating at the same time. In 2004, it even withstood the explosion of an adjacent building with no evidence of structural damage. Until the textile industry moved south, this building symbolized and embodied Lewiston's successful role in a national economy. So this building has sat empty for many years now, and after a recent proposal for a casino on that, side, on that site failed to win enough votes, Last winter, the local newspaper initiated a reader's project, asking the com community for proposed new uses of the mill before the city pursues demolition. My partner, Kevin, and I were so excited and submitted a vision for the new BM5 City Center, where you could visit a marketplace of fresh local food, dine while overlooking the canals, or stroll through indoor gardens. When the story was published a few weeks later, another submission, this one, immediately caught our attention. The concept was to use the building for a technology center or server farm, similar to Google's cloud, that used clean hydropower and designed to capture heat from the computers to provide warmth for indoor agriculture. 
This concept resonated with our vision and enhanced it with the approach to technology, the link to history of the building, and reclaimed energy to renew this iconic piece of our urban fabric. This spring, I had an opportunity to buy the original hand-drawn, beautiful linen plans for the mill. When I saw these prints for the first time, I realized they were dated 1912, 100 years ago, the year after my grandmother, who also worked in this building, was born. To me, these coincidences and how they related to my personal history heightened my interest and convinced me to ask friends if I could show the drawings at their Lisbon Street Gallery. On a whim, to make this exhibit more interesting, I called James Mangrum, the author of that exciting project that we saw in the newspaper, and asked if he agreed to, present, to come up and present his work to an audience as part of a community discussion series. The three-part event at the gallery generated excitement and momentum, enough to spur a group of community members to join together and meet weekly to pursue this further. The 1912 drawings, next to James's research, helped people envision the renewed life this building could have as a vibrant community center. His pioneering business model marries ideas of technology, urban farming, economic and community sustainability to reactivate Mill 5. The design maintains this unbelievable connection with the canals and does so without extensive reconfiguration. And this iconic sawtooth structure is ideally configured to provide natural lighting for an indoor farming center, growing, preserving, and distributing food. In his project, James identified an added opportunity for the excess heat from the computer servers to be captured and utilized to heat the gardens. This approach is a model for creative reuse of our infrastructure and importantly provides a platform to develop the latent potential of LA. The urban farming movement is happening all over the world and can have the power to revitalize our cities, change the way we eat, and bring our food back into our control. The existence, location, and orientation of Mill 5 is ideally suited for establishing a year-round urban food hub in our downtown. Through this process, I continue to believe that we have the power to affect change by envisioning the outcome we want to see. This concept has been proven to me, one, because I'm here today, but also with the continued support of community members who have enthusiastically worked with me and are now supplemented with a group of 12 inspired students from Bates College who are researching to test the economic feasibility. After we recently toured the mill, it was obvious to me that this new generation was inspired by the building and this project's vision for a realistic future. As this building approaches 100 years old, I challenge you to join me to make this vision a reality. I want all of us to see that same city my relatives came to and thought was exciting enough to stay in. Imagine a highly efficient and productive way to grow food, using controlled environments and hydroponics to produce 10 times the food, 10, 10 times the yield of traditional farming with one-tenth of the resources. Security and sustainability in our food system are not going to happen if the trend continues where food travels the average 1,900 miles from where it's grown to where we consume it. By utilizing this structure in a new way, we can employ local people and increase our own food security. We can reinstate the best technology and use the building the way it was intended, as self-sustaining. Instead of filling a landfill with it, we can turn around this abandoned building and make it into a hub of food and technology and use our existing resources most appropriately. Imagine on the coldest winter days, people shopping, dining, and enjoying urban life. Envision change. Welcome to my village. Thank you. <laughs>